Kerkalab, Kerkalab, let's get some gloves on. Letia Striata, together with Fernanda Nacimento and plants and other things. And yes, I am using gloves because I have to mess around with dirt as opposed to a spoon and lacquer. So I don't like to have to scrub underneath my nails. Just a side note. Fernanda Nacimiento, orchids and succulents, plants and other things. We're going to talk about the Chinese ground orchid. Pletia striata in this case. There are others, yes. But Fernanda sent me this one. And we decided that this is perfect to do a care collab on. Not only because we have it, both of us, but also because in my case, I am absolutely clueless. I do not have a Japanese ground orchid. I've never owned one. But from what I gather, what I can see here, it is in normal, normal hummus rich soil. It is well draining because I've been watering it on a frequent basis since I got her. It did go dormant at a certain stage. You can see the old sticks from the old tubers here. And now it's coming back to life. The fact that it goes dormant, that is normal. I did not panic when I saw that happen. Usually terrestrial orchids will have dormancy because they're hardy in winter and their leaves will die off. But why am I doing a repot together with you? Well, if you are like me in my case, then maybe it's interesting to see the roots and maybe it's interesting to see what I plan to do for future cultivation because I'm not going to go down the soil route. I am going down Akadama. And I was thinking Akadama and Terrarium Grit. But seeing as this soil is so fine and it's still well draining, so there's plenty of sand in here as well, I am not going to go and add grit into my mixture. I'm going with Akadama only because Akadama is very, very well draining. And I'm going to put them in a semi-hydro setup. And that is why this repot is now happening together with the Care Collab so we can observe whether my intuition proves me correct or proves me wrong. And I'm being super careful because these roots are all new roots from the new growths and I do not want to lose them. But what I do want to do is get off all the soil so that I don't have a lot of moisture around the tubers on top of what the Akadama will give me. So I'm going to get my sprayer and I'm going to get my pruners and tidy her up a bit and I'll be right back. So I have a pot here. I have not drilled any holes on this pot at all because I wanted to see if it's going to be too big for the bletilla, but I also don't want to be repotting year in, year out. So if I go down a size, I have a feeling that's what I'm going to do because this little one seems to be quite the grower. She only had a few bulbs when she arrived and already she's shooting out one, two, three, five new growths. So if that momentum continues in the subsequent years, then I will be doing this over and over again and I don't want to. That's why I think I'm gonna go with a bigger pot because in my climate, I can leave them outside. In the US, I have read up just in case for my US viewers, they are actually hardy outdoors to zone five, but you need to mulch them, be a bit protective about them. If you're expecting cold, icy frost or something like that, a lot of mulch on them and they should be all right. So in my climate, I do not get to, I only get to five degrees Celsius minimum. They will be living outside all year round as they did in that little nursery pot, but on the little drier side. And that is why I want to be able to control what is going in. And that is why I'm thinking Akadama only, because if she gets rained on during the winters when we do get some rain, 
then the water can just flush out and overflow and I don't have to worry about rot. You can see how the tuber is coming through and is now emerging. And I'll show you when I finished with all of this, what she looks like. Let's have a look, see. I love me white orchid roots. <laughs> oh, so gorgeous. You see how the rhizome grows into little corms attached. So propagation is going to be easy down the line. Old, old, and here come two new ones. And old here, and then two new ones right there. So this is nice to know that this is going to be a good one to propagate. And all I'm going to do is just clean her up from the old roots. And I wouldn't normally bother at this stage because she is going into Akadama, which in itself is clean, but I have planned to have her in there for many, many years. And that is why I am cleaning her up from get, and getting rid of the old roots, just so that I know she gets a start that is fresh and free of decay. And then I can see and judge better what I need to do instead of guessing how long is this going to be good for. So even the rhizome has roots growing along it as it extends, not just underneath the corm. So these are all old roots right here and they have similar attributes to any other orchid root. They have the outer velamen, and then there is just a little bit of a string inside that is the actual root. So the same characteristics, which I find super interesting. And I shall continue with my little cleanup here as best as I can. You can see the old roots like right there. and they are stubborn. They don't just come off because they're old. They are firmly attached, even though they are absolutely useless in their function at this stage. So just be a little bit more careful as I clean this up. There we go. That would be it for me, in my opinion. Now, from what I can notice on these, being a first timer to a blatilla is that if the roots do not reach straight into something wet, like media, if they come out like on the top here, I hope you can see that, like this one there, that's just the little root fiber left, they will dry out. So I think my Akadama is going to be perfect for this. I have a feeling that this can work. They shouldn't be too soggy at the base from what I can tell because at their initial growth, they are very, very delicate, like spring onions. So they really have to be careful there not to pop them off. So they shouldn't be in such a wet environment that would make them rot. But how do you do that and then make sure that the roots that are growing won't fail as they try to reach the media. And I think with my Akadama that is going to work because of my dry top layer of this very, very dry climate that I have here. And then I have, while I was cleaning up, decided she is going to go in this pot and then I can leave her alone. So I'm going to take my Dremel and drill reservoir holes into this pot and I will be right back. There we go holes. Unfortunately, the heat of the plastic and the Dremel sometimes causes these little things to go all over the place. That's what I don't use a nail or a soldering iron because I don't want the black. But I need to get this in the pot. I can't be faffing around with aesthetics at this point. I can work on that at a later stage 
because what I'm going to do now is fill up the base with large lava rock just to give me like a crocking so that I don't have to waste so much akadama. And that clearly is not enough. But we have more of this, lots of this. And this is how I want to make sure that I at least save a little bit on the akadama. My, my point is not to go, because usually in semi-hydroponics you want to be above the reservoir and then put the roots in. My point here is to just simply fill up the bottom as best as I can to save a little bit on the akadama. Just sort of saving resources a bit here. So let's get some pure plain akadama into the pot. And I have my trusted spade <laughs> instead of a spoon, seeing as we're not doing mini pots here. We'll be here all day if I just used a spoon. I'm just going to fill it up to the point of where I believe the roots will be. Oh, that would be perfect. Hmm. And then I'm going to flush it through. Even though I flushed it through the, at the sink, I'm going to do that one more time just so that I don't keep flushing around the orchid, which needs to start to dry out. This gives me a baseline of color, the water that's pouring out. If the Apkadama were to degrade, as this orchid is going to be living outside all the time, I need to see a clear color come out. And that gives me an idea then for future reference. As this gets browner and browner over time, I'm expecting three years, maybe four years, because my Akadama will never be exposed to freezing temperatures. So as I see that liquid come out and become sort of muddier, then I know the Akadama is breaking down, which will not allow for as much oxygenation around the roots. That is my marker. So let's get you in. Where are the holes? You are growing in a semicircle, and I will situate her in the middle just in case that rhizome decides to come out with some more new growth at some point in time. And let's go, let's play. So I'm just going to tap it a little bit into place. It is wet. There won't be much jiggling going on, but with time, the water will disperse the akadama into the right location and in and around the root system. But I do want to expose the corm just a little bit, not the, not the new ones, except for the roots. And this is where it starts, where I would say in my climate, I'm hoping that the akadama is going to help me with the dry top layer, unless I'm watering or flushing but at the same time, the roots are immediately in a moist environment and won't fail. If, by chance, I'm finding it too dry, I'm putting lava rock on top, small lava rock. So now that water is running a little bit more browner simply because I've been manipulating more akadama into the pot. That is not my indicator. The more you manipulate akadama while it's in its wet stage, the more porous it comes, and that is what we're seeing now. But I think that is a fair enough mark that I can go by with regards to the health of the pot and the state of the akadama. My label, always where the holes are so I don't go messing about if I'm transporting her. And as far as I'm concerned, Bletia, Bloom and grow forever, well, for three years. But here's the thing. I filmed this on the 2nd of March because I have to. I can't wait for the date of airing the video to be able to do this on that day because the orchid needs it to be done now. So we have time and very, very shortly, we'll have another quick look-see at her closer to the date of airing the video. But this is my idea, my repot, my concept for Bletia striata for the time being, and I'll see you just now. And here we are three and a half weeks later with a snap of a finger. <laughs> Bletia striata, just to wrap it up and update after the reponting, I think I'm seeing some increase in the leaves. 
She looks to be doing okay. Everything that is a little bit um, discolored on the foliage there was early, early days when I went with my paintbrush and alcohol to get rid of some mealybugs that I saw developing. So there's that, very sensitive leaves in that sense, but not to direct sun. So I'm very, very carefully now acclimatizing her to the highlight circumstances I have here. She is on the west side of the patio and gets direct sun from about two o'clock now until sunset, which is about four hours. It is still a weak sun, but I want to acclimate her and see if she can take my harsh southern Spanish sun because she is supposedly a highlight orchid, but that is all relative. If I feel that the leaves are gonna get too hot, then she will go into a shaded area where there is still bright shade, but uh, not direct sun. But we're still early in the spring season, so I'm thinking that with all this airflow that is going on, keeping the leaves cool, she is in a great place. I have watered her since then twice. And you can see the Akadama does dry out there every once in a while because, yeah, the warm winds are coming. And this is what I was hoping for with regards to the base of the orchid not getting too wet but having sort of, you know, the good balance of the roots going straight into the media as opposed to finding their way on around the surface, but not having that base so wet that it would rot. So from what I can see so far, this Akadama is doing really, really well. I must say I'm super pleased and I'm sorry I misspoke earlier in the clip. I called it a Japanese ground orchid. It is a Chinese ground orchid. And let me tell you, if this works well, there are in total nine, which means I have eight more to go and find. <laughs> they can live outside in my climate. I don't have to worry about bringing them in. They go dormant and they live outside. I have space outside all year round. And if this works, there will be eight more that I need to find because I think they're very beautiful. It's like having a mini Fios. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So yes. Thank you very much, Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents, also for sending me this orchid. I really appreciate it. Thank you for trusting me with something new. Thank you for joining me here on this care collab. And thank you also to Plants and Other Things for doing this care collab with us. I really, really appreciate it. Let's see what happens if she's going to bloom or if this is just the first year of getting acclimated because I don't see any bloom spikes. I appreciate everybody for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care and stay safe. Bye. Bye.